know, it's, it's, it's more than just a game and we need to help grow and, and help people be better people and be responsible for each other. So there's definitely a, a lot of room for growth and yeah, it's on, it's on myself just as much as anyone to, to reach out when something's not right to stand up and work through it and, and push people to be better. And that's, you know, that's what we need to do. Welcome everyone to Hockey Culture where we're changing the culture of hockey, one interview at a time. Uh, today, we've got the pleasure of having Ryan O'Reilly join us, Stanley Cup champion, Con Smythe winner from St. Louis Blues. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, thank you. Before we get started, I want to talk about your beard for a second, because I'm growing my beard out right now, staying at home, and my wife and kids hate it, but the reason why I'm growing my beard is because it's a reminder for the mask the frontline workers um, have to put on every single day and once I say that to them they settle right down so I want to know like how do you maintain this thing in the, in the summertime does it get hot it does but uh, honestly I just I can't stand the, the look of myself without it I just feel like I you know I look uh, I've got a baby face underneath there so I I need all the toughness I can get and I feel like the beard kind of adds a little edge to me you know <laughs> well the beard isn't the only thing we have in common uh, we both uh, grew up with our parents having foster kids as part of the family uh, my parents um, had several foster kids living with us in Scarborough. My mom and dad liked having the additional bodies in the house. It kept the house lively. They loved the chaos. And uh, you experienced exactly the same thing. Um, how did that experience help you deal with being and learning with uh, people not looking like yourself and being more inclusive? Um, yeah, I, I can't thank my parents enough for what they did. And, you know, for the first, uh, I was born into it. Um, you know, when I came home, I think there was already three, four kids living with us that, at that time. And just growing up with it, you learned just so much on kind of, you know, that, you know, there's people that come from, you know, different situations that, you know, have issues and, you know, they need help. And my parents opening their home like that and bring them in and getting to deal with them and, and learning, you know, not just me, my parents do learning how to live with them and get along. It's, it's something that's carried over, I think, in everything. And I really hope I can, you know, give my kids that same kind of uh, experience because, yeah, you just, you learn so much of it. And especially in hockey, just, you know, being able to play on a team and have guys from all different backgrounds and different situations, but be able to relate and be able to develop a friendship is something that's so important. Is there any favorite memory that you have looking back, of thinking to yourself, well, this is kind of unique. Not everyone has the ability to experience this, uh, being in a situation when you have foster kids living with you. Yeah, um, you know, I, I think of uh, you know. So we lived about uh, three hours west of Toronto. We lived in this spot uh, called Brucefield, which was like a small, one two stop sign town, just tiny. But uh, we had an acre property, and on it, my dad put in like a little sports pad and just uh, you know, big chunk of concrete, and we had uh, an outdoor. You know, with a couple, we had an outdoor area with a couple of nets, and you know, all the time we'd we'd have these big hockey games, and it was so cool that hockey was a thing that kind of brought us all together. And we'd get out in the back there, and I remember my dad, he would uh, he'd always like stuff like a just like a, a pillow in and use it as his jock, just to make sure he didn't get hit. And any of the kids maybe not really kind of upset with him would give him one there, so he kind of would put a pillow down there, and that would be his jock. And then we'd have these big hockey games and. <laughs> yeah, my mom was one of the most competitive. She wanted to win all the time, but uh, I, I can remember that. I can remember us all being out there, and it would have been um, – my younger sister was a little too young, but it would have been uh, my older sister, Tara, my older brother, Cal, myself, and then uh, four other foster kids and my parents. Then we'd have uh, my cousin who was living with us at the time. So we had this massive hockey game, and it was just so cool, like, like how many kids, like, have that opportunity to be able to, you know, just go in the back, like, all right, we're having a big hockey game tonight, and – and it just brought us all together and competitive, but also fun. And it was just kind of, uh, yeah, it was like a, a big family that took care of each other and, and enjoyed each other's company. So it's definitely very special. You said your dad wore the pillow like a jock in case uh, when the kids were upset with him. Did your parents treat all the kids the same like they treated you? I know there was times I'd come home in the off season and some of the, the kids would say to me, man, was, was your parents – this mean? Did they make you do your homework every single day? Were they on you about schoolwork and being on time and curfew? I said, you have no idea how tough my parents were on me. You guys are getting the same Carter Lovey that I receive <laughs> now today. Were your parents exactly the same way? Um, it, it was different. I think, um, you know, when we have so many kids and 
uh, you know, the first part of my life, I was so much younger than most of the kids in there. So I was pretty, obviously, I, at that point, I was kind of sheltered through a lot of things. But, you know, kids were getting upset and kind of working out issues and stuff. They were kind of, um, you know, my older brother and sister would kind of make sure I wasn't seeing anything kind of go on or arguments and try to shelter me from it. But, yeah, as I kind of got uh, a little bit older, you could, uh, yeah, you definitely see that, you know, they, they did such an amazing job at when someone wasn't doing good of sitting there and talking it out, my parents were such like all about internal psychology and, and if someone was upset, you know, they'd have to go, go outside, cool off. And then my parents would come out and talk to them. And so same thing with us, you know, they, they didn't want to get into an argument with us in front of the other kids. It would just be okay. You know, let's go. We'll talk with this a bit. Go cool down for a couple minutes. I'll come or go to your room for a couple minutes. I'll come up and we'll talk it out. But uh, yeah, I think they did a great job that they, you know, they, we worked through everything. And I think it helped, you know, all of us in that, in that situation. Now, were you able to take that and bring that into the locker room too? Your 11 seasons, you played, you know, for three different teams. Um, how inclusive have those locker rooms been that you've experienced over the course of your initial career? Um, yeah, I think it's been pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I, all those lessons that I've kind of learned throughout, you know, growing up in these situations and, and seeing that, that definitely helped me dramatically and, and being in the situations and, you know, being able to reach out and, and, talk to guys and, you know, seeing a guy's upset, uh, you know, I, I, a lot of times I'll see guys that, you know, that's maybe going through something that, you know, it's a little tough to talk about. And I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll go to my dad and be like, dad, you know, is there any way you could kind of, you know, help this player or talk to this player and help them and kind of struggling something like that. Um, and I think as I mature as well, I kind of am able to kind of grasp those lessons and, you know, I can start to do it as well. But, um, yeah, I think it's helped me so much in, in rooms and being and being able to help include everyone and, you know, seeing when someone's having a hard time with something, be able to notice it and, and bring them in closer to, to be a part of this, this family and this team. Now, do guys on the team or did guys in your other teams you played on previously know about your background uh, growing up with foster kids? And, you know, what ways can we use or approaches we can we take to make NHL locker rooms more inclusive? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think guys kind of knew it kind of, well, actually after the first few years, I think kind of a couple of stories came out about it and eventually kind of, yeah, kind of told people the story, but, um, you know, yeah, I think there definitely is so much more room for improvement. Um, you know, especially, you know, early in the game, whether it's junior hockey, you know, in my household and growing up my, with my parents, the lesson was that, you know, you're responsible for each other's well-being. And that's got to be the golden rule. And, and when we're young and even now, the teams in the NHL, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just a game. And we need to help grow and, and help people be better people and be responsible for each other. So there's definitely a, a lot of room for growth. And, yeah, it's on, it's on myself just as much as anyone to, to reach out when something's not right to stand up and work through it and, and push people to be better. And that's, you know, that's what we need to do. So who would be the guys in the room there in St. Louis? Like you're one of the uh, leaders there, obviously, you know, wearing one of the A's, Petrangelo, your captain is one of the leaders also. Uh, is it the leadership core that would speak up or would there be other guys in the room that would feel confident enough to if you see something, you say something? Yeah, it's, you know, you can see the, you know, this is obviously my second year with the Blues and you know, look at our team, the leadership that we have is, you know, one of the best things I've seen, um, best groups I've seen and, it is, you can see why, you know, I think we did have success last year because, you know, I think all guys felt comfortable being able to say something. And, and you know, I look at our leadership group and, you know, a guy like, you know, Steen, who's been around for many years, you know, his wisdom too. He's a guy that, that sees everything and addresses everything. And, you know, you look at that and, you know, for myself, you know, I, I want to be more like that, being able to, you know, no matter what situation happens in the dressing room or game, you, you see it and you go to that person, you talk about it or you go to the, the staff and, and talk about it. So there's, you know, there's guys that are doing it and there's guys that feel comfortable stepping up. But again, it's all, you know, myself, let's be like, that's, you know, another step where I can grow and I can do more. And how do you see the team playing a factor in this? Uh, a lot of the stuff that we're seeing right now, the uneasy relationship between the police and say the black community and sports in general have historically been really tight with the police community, great relationship. Uh, do you think sports can play a critical role in helping to mend that fence and have people come together? You're thinking about the police and the black community. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know there's a kind of a program we're trying to trying to launch um, that started with PK, um, trying to kind of get the kind of youth in the area or in the black community and the police involved in something, bringing the game and, uh, you know, getting a chance to meet the players and talk to them, but get them all together and, and watch hockey. And, and, and I think it's a brilliant program that can definitely help. And yeah, sports is, you know, sports is something that, you know, so many kids look up to it and, and, you know, people use it as an escape or something to really get into. And there's definitely, there's a pressure there on us to, to rise up and, and help mend this, broken relationship and you know because it's not it's there's so much pain in the world right now and you know as leaders in our communities and such you know it's our responsibility to to be the voice and stand up and and help yeah bridge this this divide and a lot of times change has to really occur at the top we've seen tremendous leadership from commissioner bettman bill daly uh don fair for the executive director of nhlpa and just recently, um, Javier Gutierrez was named um, as the president of the Arizona Coyotes. And you guys there in St. Louis have one of the pillars of the community. Um, Mr. David Stewart is one of your limited partners of the St. Louis Blues. Um, how important do you think would that be to have more minority involvement at the ownership level um, to help foster that change? Yeah, it's extremely important. Um, you know, I think the more of it, the better. I think we need to see that. It's, you know, I think it's unfortunate with hockey is such a, you know, you know, a, a white sport that, that we need more in there. We need more change and more culture in there for sure. Cause it's just, it's not, uh, you know, it, it's got to change, you know, it's got to be more accepting and you hear stories of, you know, what kids go through, players go through, um, from the minorities that it's just, it, it's, it's awful. And, you know, I think when it changes up top, it's a great example and it'll help trickle down through. And what would your message be finally to your two young boys? Your father now, you saw how your father raised you and now you're a father of your, of your own um, two kids. What would your message be to your, your two young boys as they're growing older, as, you, as they ask you questions about inequality and dealing with racism and people from different cultures? Um, yeah, you know, I feel, you know, I would tell them that, you know, there's no life more important than, than another. You know, we are all equal no matter what we come through. And, and there are many people that don't have it like we have it. And you need to be able to stand up and be strong and help people in what they're going through. You know, I, it's, I think it's our duty to be responsible for each other and stand up and, and be the voice and make the changes that you see. So I hope uh, I hope I can teach them that and, and and watch them go through. Is that why you felt a responsibility to put out that statement to the St. Louis Blues when you did um, about George Floyd and what happened there in Minnesota? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I uh, you know some of the thought, well, we consider foster kids that uh, live with us, but my uh, you know I have three black cousins. Um, you know, my uncle married a black woman. They had, had three kids, and they ended up living us living with us for. Gosh, I want to say five, six years, kind of growing up, and and my older, uh, he was a little bit older, but one of my best friends is, was one of them, and his name is Matthew Bowler, and um, you know, I feel, you know, you could see the stuff, the struggles that he had, and he went through, and you know, you think of him in that situation, and all he's been through, and I feel it's my responsibility seeing it, and you know, I need to say something, I need to step up, and and not only that, but in the community. You know, there's so many kids that I think look up to, to us, to us hockey players. And if they see me standing up, I think it helps them stand up as well. And I just think it's my responsibility. Well, it's important. We always talk about allyship. And it's important to have people like yourself stepping up, having that platform, using your platform, being brave enough to say something. Uh, it always can't be players like former players like myself and current players that look like myself as black athletes. We need to have our white allies to be standing shoulder to shoulder with us. So I definitely appreciate all your comments. I um, appreciate you taking your time today on the hockey culture. Um, it's, it's so important to keep stressing that message and having those conversations with your teammates. So I can't thank you enough, Brian. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you.